Hey guys, Speed here, and today we'll be going over a CCNC replay and looking at what he does when he gets ahead and has a good landing stage, and how he transitions that into snowballing the game and crushing for his team. But before I go directly into what he does after the landing stage to snowball his start, let's briefly talk about what he does in the landing stage to crush a Skywrath Mage. I found this game very interesting because Skywrath Mage is a hero that typically can crush Lena in lane, but somehow CCNC managed to absolutely dumpster him, and I don't mean like like level 5 to 5 in a hard matchup, I mean like 5 to level 4 and 8 when he was 5, like crazy stuff, so there's definitely a lot to take out. So the first thing you're going to notice CCNC do is actually bring the creeps under his tower, and this might make it a little bit hard to CS, but what it does do is give CCNC a time in which he can pressure the Skywrath Mage, which is right about here. So you notice he nukes out the range creep. And because the lane is pushing in the Skyrath Mage, he can pressure him quite heavily. At least going for denies. Also, by pushing in the first lane, not only do you get this small gap where you can potentially pressure a few heroes, the next wave will be under Skyrath's tower as well. Which means that the next one will be under CCNC's tower. So instead of the lane just being completely static in the middle, where Skyrath can continuously nuke CCNC. It's often under a tower where it's a little bit harder for Skyrath to do this because as you notice here, Skyrath has to back up and be careful about taking tower hits. So CCNC makes an amazing play here and I just want to talk about everything that leads up to it. So first off, you notice CCNC is about to hit level three and this is a big power spike because if he has anywhere close to three souls, he can do a ton of damage with his stun. And you notice that's exactly what he does here. But I'm going to quickly pause, and what often happens in the middle lane is when a deny is coming up, even on ranged heroes, people will click up simply because they are going for the deny. This often will put them out of position. It's something that happens very frequently, and you can see that he immediately takes advantage of it. If I skip back very briefly... You will notice he pushes out the lane, and then right as the Skywrath potentially will go for the deny, he steps up, punishing it. Really clean play, honestly. So the last point I want to talk about in the landing stage comes here. So you notice the car wave comes, and often people will push on the car wave. What CCNC does is a little bit different, which I found very interesting. So you notice they fortify the tower and instantly he backs off. But what he does when he backs off is more important. He quickly goes to the jungle and stacks his camp. At the perfect time, he gets there pretty much just in time. And this nearly escalates him to level 8 at 6 minutes into the game. This isn't something I've really seen from a ton of mid laners where they'll just abandon the car wave to jungle but it was the perfect time for the stack. And in combination with the shrine, he can come out of it with full mana. So the first point I want to make about rotating is that communication is pretty important in having successful ganks. So here, CCNC can read that the gank is coming. So he must have communicated with his Chen to recall him. This is a big deal because without it, he wouldn't have been able to make this amazing play where he catches the Skyroth very much off guard. And with a crucial stun, really on the edge there, is able to pick up another kill on the Snake King. This gang catapults him to level 9. He is currently the highest level by 3. Really impressive. This level disparity comes primarily from the stack that he took and the efficiency there and this really well-timed gank in communication with his Chen. Now what he does next is also very important. This is a full health tower, but because they have a Chen, they're able to capitalize on this gank by pressuring the tower. If he immediately went to the jungle, this definitely wouldn't have happened. And what's even more important to take out of this is that he's willing to trade HP to commit to this tower. He knows if he leaves now, he 
It probably won't be another while until they take the tower, and this gives him a very large net worth lead for his team. So CCNC is recalled back bottom by the Chen, and he could have sat here for a long time and waited for another gank opportunity, which I think is what a lot of mid laners would have done. They get wrapped up in the idea that they can snowball their advantage with kills, and they end up not farming at all. But you'll notice he has a very nice mix here. He goes to defend his mid tower. This prevents the Skyrath from having a completely free lane and keeps up his farm as well as pressures the mid tower that's already pretty low, about half HP. What CCNC does very well throughout this game is communicating with his teammates. Of course, I don't have the exact audio clips, but you can tell. He pushes this lane when his Chen is nearby with a cart, and it allows them to slowly but surely get the tower. With careful positioning, he's able to pressure it with right clicks. And because of a nice ward in the enemy jungle, he can see them coming and position more towards the right side. Not only does this pressure take them the middle tower, but it also forces a few enemy heroes to come towards the mid lane, wasting their time. You'll notice that the Jug has nearly complete free farm, and the Sven is farming as well. Around the 10-20 minute mark, CCNC decides to go top to pressure the tower. Around the same time, his Chen gets ganked in the jungle, but you'll notice he doesn't TP it right away. He does check it out, coming up here. But he doesn't TP. I think a lot of players definitely would have TP'd because your role as a mid laner is often to help your other your, your other teammates when you have a good start. However, this is often a misconception. Pressuring in other lanes can have the same impact as saving a core or picking up a return kill on a support. You notice here he's fortunate enough with the help of his immense skill to pick up a kill on Beastmaster. But if he just pushed in two lanes and pressured the tower, it would have had the same impact as getting a return kill on something like the Underformed Skywrath Mage or the Dazzle. In this current meta, it is common to see a lot of teams 5-man when they have a very good start with aura items. However, what you'll notice is that CCMC is barely ever 5-manning with his team in this game. Of course, he does show up to help with some pickoffs, but you'll notice here his team is pretty grouped up and looking like they might posture for the bottom tower or the mid tower but he's pushing in top. So what does this do? Well, it does a few things. It puts pressure once again on the top tier two tower, and it spreads out the team's total farm. If he's grouped up bottom with his Sven and Jug, either one of them isn't going to be farming, or they'll be splitting XP, and this just is not optimal. Instead, he spreads out the map, which also in turn spreads out the enemy team. The enemy team has a very good pushing lineup, with Beastmaster, Dazzle, Jakiro, and Terrorblade, but CCNC does not let them do this. They have many things they need to attend to, whether it being pressuring Jug or reacting to CCNC in the top lane. So pressuring something like the bottom or mid tower is not really an option for them. CCNC continues pressuring the top lane, and because he has the luxury of a Chen, he can continue to do this without being punished by reacting late. You might be like, well, that's why he can pressure the top tower and not stay with his team. But if you look at his next item choice, it's bots. Bots allow him to do pretty much the exact same thing as having a recall. It's maybe not as efficient, but it's the same idea. You can push in other lanes and then react very quickly to your teammates' ganks. What what CCNC does after this gank is very important. He TPs back to base and gets his bots, but more importantly, he runs at this Terrorblade. He sees him farming top, and instead of giving him a lot of space, he uses his early advantage to pressure him. You'll notice he doesn't get the kill, but what's important is that he pressures him out of the safe space. If he forces Terrorblade to go bottom, his other teammates can set up on him. The only safe part of the map for Terrorblade to farm is top lane, and CCNC is now occupying it. 
Upcoming here is going to show the power of the bots. So he decides to go on snaking mid. Snaking is the Jakiro. And he doesn't pick up the kill, as you'll see here. He drops very low, uses nearly his entire mana pool, and is left on a very awkward HP and mana pool. But because he has bots, he's able to TP back to base and come back full. In this situation, he cheats a little bit. He has a Chen once again. But if he didn't have a Chen, the same thing would have happened. He would have bots back in. And that would have been very powerful because he can stay on the map and continue to pressure his lead. If he was out of mana and HP here, he wouldn't be able to make this upcoming play where he's able to win a team fight with his team. Just another reason why bots can be super powerful. So I'm going to let you guys take a guess at what CCNC does after this team fight. I'm going to wait for a few seconds to think of it in your head. Alright, if you haven't guessed by now, he pushes out top. This is a very simple pattern, but effective one. Every time they take a fight, he manages to close off Terrorblade's farming patterns. Or at least push him off the wave. Because if Terrorblade pushes this in, he might be able to get the top tower, or just amp his farm. CCNC has always stressed the importance of pushing in lanes, but I think this game is a great example of him really prioritizing it over anything. So CCNC's team takes Roshan, and what he does here is interesting. He does not go back top for a change, but rather goes bottom. You'll notice that bottom is no longer a dead lane, because they have very good vision and they can see everyone else top. Because of this, he is able to make this judgment and get a kill on the Jakiro. Because he's so attentive to the side lanes, you'll notice that they have all their tier 1 towers up. This is definitely not by chance, it's simply a product of his play. Now I wouldn't recommend this every game, but CCNC decides to go for a Solar Crest. I suppose he felt that this is just a great item to end the game, and that this game is pretty much out of hand and over. Now let's watch in admiration as CCNC carefully picks the enemy team apart with the help of a really nice coddle ult. Before I end the video, I'm going to leave you guys with three main tips that you should remember. First, communicate when going on ganks. Second, make it a priority to push out lanes when ahead. Don't focus everything on kills. And third, consider bots on a hero that is going to be pushing out lanes. They are extremely effective because you can use them with TPs now to have two different teleports. Alright, thank you guys for watching. If you learned anything about Dota at all, please like and subscribe to help the channel grow. And don't forget to check out GameLeap.com, where we have thousands of guides made by top pros.